we all know that there are approximately 700 to 800 deaf schools in India. There are millions and millions of deaf children. But do they have access to sign language at their homes? The answer is no. Most parents of deaf children are hearing. A very small percentage of deaf children are fortunate to be born to deaf parents and use sign language while growing up. As a result, a few deaf children acquire adequate reading writing skills while most others do not. The fact is, literacy remains a very big challenge for a very high number of deaf children. It has almost been 100 years. We are repeating the same mistakes and not really solving the core issues. This cannot continue any further. In 2016, the peer-to-peer -peer project was established to conduct a very important research about challenges related to education of deaf children. The peer-to-peer -peer project has now evolved into the peer-to-peer -peer deaf multiliteracies, P2PDM, which involves a bigger team and more innovative teaching learning strategies. The P2PDM has been established at the Happy Hands School for the Deaf at a small village in Odisha. This is the sign for the Happy Hands School. The Happy Hands School for the Deaf is a typical rural village school with minimum facilities. However, we provide full exposure to rich and engaging signing environment through deaf teachers. Fancy and decorated infrastructure does not guarantee education. Education needs an environment and culture which invigorates the children, accessible language and full communication between teachers and students. Let us now see the story. Hello from the P2P DM project. The full form is mentioned below. The acronym P2P stands for peer-to-peer, -peer, D stands for deaf, M stands for multiliteracies. Multiliteracy is not limited to reading and writing but includes multimodal forms of literacy such as gestures, sign language, art and technology. It is a fact that deaf children all over the world face language and literacy deprivation. The project aims to provide transformational solutions to these educational challenges faced by deaf learners. The Happy Hands School for the Deaf in Odisha have been project partners since 2017. Under this project, we tested our teaching methodologies with deaf children and the results have been amazing. Children have developed a sense of confidence which is in line with our aim to match the educational needs of deaf learners. Let us see one such methodology being used in the classroom. This is related to standard 2. From the various topics I have been teaching, I would like to share one important topic, sign stories and art. The deaf learner signs a story and then represents the same via drawing. This technique is really beneficial. Let's see how it is done. Teacher setting the context by showing pictures from a familiar story and then giving a new setting which is instantly grasped by the child and then they start building on it. Prior to the activity, the teacher needs to plan and arrange for some teaching learning materials. We need blank drawing sheets, some picture books, with images from the surrounding like nature, animals, sports, transport, etc. The teacher will also need to prepare some stories from their own lived experiences. The teacher sets the context and recreates a personal story from their experience with the help of flashcards and picture books. The drawing part happens later. First, the teacher asks the learners to take turns to narrate a similar story. The learners are now excited and want to narrate their story. The teacher helps the learners to come forward one by one. As soon as the first learner signs a story, other learners are inspired and want to express their ideas in front of the class. When the learners have finished narrating, the teacher assists them with the drawing. The drawing process has to be facilitated by the teacher. Every learner draws their story on an empty sheet. The teacher assists in recognizing the flow of the story and encouraging every child to represent his or her part via art. 
These kind of activities enable children to create and narrate a story by themselves. This methodology requires guidance by the teachers and is very effective for deaf children. The girl narrates a story about Vijaya, Shakti and Raj. Raj is running to the door. Raj falls down and hurts his head and starts crying. Then Jagdish sir comes and takes him to the hospital. As I explained before, the girl narrates the story using the pictures in a logical sequence. This activity has many benefits. One important benefit is developing confidence. The same activity without the drawing will not yield the same result as the children will struggle to connect the ideas. The process of recreating the story in art form instills confidence and interest. The other advantage is vocabulary building by adding names and words to the pictures. This way the children are able to connect the images with signs and words effectively. With this kind of activity, there is improved clarity and understanding and narrating it in front of their peers creates a ripple effect and motivates the other children to do the same. The confidence to stand and sign a story in front of the classroom comes from building conceptual clarity through art. This is a very effective and beneficial approach. After class 2, let's look at teaching strategies used in class 3. I would like to focus on the transdisciplinary learning approach. What is transdisciplinary learning? Normally, subjects such as science, mathematics, technology and art are taught separately. Whereas, in transdisciplinary learning, these subjects are linked together. In school timetables, we see subject-wise segregation, which translates into children having similar distinction in their mind, and they are unable to connect the information. This is the traditional approach. In comparison, people might find the transdisciplinary learning approach chaotic, but in reality it has positive results. In fact, within a single topic, you will find interconnected elements of science, mathematics, art, etc. Let me illustrate with an example of an activity based on plants where we can borrow from science. Let's see how. These children are trying to pot a plant. Before the activity, they had asked me if the plant will grow and become a tree and hence will need a bigger pot. I thought it was an interesting self-learning activity. The teacher is discussing with the children. We all know that sunlight is critical for plants. Can plants survive inside a room without sunlight? No, they cannot. But did the children know that? I needed to test their understanding. I asked them and they said it is better to place the plants inside to save them from drying out in the sun. This meant that the children were doing individual thinking. Next, I wanted them to check it out themselves. We took two plants one covered and the other without the cover. We ensured both plants were watered and after seven days we told them to see what will happen. Let us see how this activity turned out.
The teacher is explaining how one plant is covered and the other is not. He tells the children to water the plants every day and then check both plants after seven days. Wow! The impact of experiential learning is always more effective than the traditional methods. Connected to the concept, I explained how plants use sunlight to make food. There were some YouTube videos which we saw as well for better understanding. Hold on! You saw how this activity has inbuilt concepts of science? The teacher and children are engaged in classroom activity. The pictures of various things like fruits, flowers, etc. are shown. Some students can identify, others cannot. This depends on their background and lived experiences. Urban or rural, the students engage in peer learning and exchange their experiences. What are the children doing outside the classrooms? Once the lesson is taught, we take the children to observe the campus which has many flowering plants and fruit trees. This automatically builds interest and reinforces the learning. The children can now connect the pictures with the real objects. We also involve the local deaf staff who has a lot of rural experience and knows about the natural flora. The children are very interested to learn from him. A deaf boy talking about a specific kind of flower used in religious offerings to Hindu gods. This deaf girl asks if you know what a pomegranate is. Then she identifies the tree. She explains how the tree was a seedling and there was rain and people watered it and then it grew into a beautiful tree. And then she shows the pomegranates on the tree. Nirav is talking about a plant with beautiful colors. A deaf boy identifies and explains about a bottle gourd plant. Children learn better from outdoor visits and exposure trips. Books do have pictures about animals. But going to a zoo is when the aha effect happens and children see the real animals. This is the same principle we use to teach about plant life. There is much more interaction, knowledge sharing and learning. This helps the children increase their general knowledge. Now let us see how the planting activity is also related to art. Did you see the drawing? 
What do you think is the use of this activity? Children forget concepts and words they learn in class after a few days. But drawing and regularly seeing these terms again and again helps children memorize new words and concepts better. The other benefit of having these drawings and concepts on the walls and visible areas of the classroom is that it also helps younger children learn from their senior peers and encourages interactive learning. It is important to let the children experiment and take ownership. It does not have to be perfect and the teacher can help the students if needed. Hold on, yet again we see how the same activity can be connected with art. After the planting activity and then conceptualizing the lesson in art form, the teacher can now step back and foster student-led discussions. This has many benefits. It allows children to take the lead in sharing what they have understood. They also express more freely and later, when the teacher revises with them, the children come up with higher order questions. The children take turns to explain how a plant makes food and grows into a tree by utilizing water and sunlight. Now we focus on how we connect ICT to our methodology. The students were provided with a laptop. Usually, it's hard for children to remember concepts and terms taught to them due to not having the visual support. Downloaded pictures from Google can be arranged in a tabular form on MS Word. And then, handouts of the same can be distributed. The students cut the images and then add them to their copies, beside which they write the related words and terms. Now the students are ready to learn on their own. It becomes their homework. With the help of images, they memorize and learn much better. I allow the students to arrange photos and MS Word. They learn by making mistakes. The teacher encourages and guides the children, which helps them become confident in using ICT. These are really exciting strategies to enable students to utilize ICT in making teaching and learning materials. Wait, you see how the planting activity can be connected with ICT and computers as well? Further, we would like to illustrate the interconnectedness of English. A deaf boy is narrating a story from the blackboard. Now we would see how the previous activities build on developing independent reading skills. We take a paragraph connected to the topic. The children may not know the signs for the words or make mistakes. The teacher facilitates the process. Once all the children have tried to sign and read the paragraph, the teacher provides the correct explanation. The children compare their mistakes and learn the right signs. This activity helps deaf children improve their reading skills. The children practice sentence writing. We use a basic sentence from the essay of trees. For example, that is a tree. Then we replace the object but keep the same sentence structure. Examples. 
that is a pen, that is an eraser. Once the children have grasped the concept and feel confident to try, the teacher points to any object and the student uses the same, that is a dash dash format to make new sentences. This comes from replacing the object from the sentence and is practice for making new sentences. This is a simple and interesting method to teach sentence construction. All teachers give homework and exercises. Children practice and study themselves at home. But this method can be boring for them. By engaging the children in creative activities and games they learn and understand better. In the video clip, one child signs the word and the other two children identify the English words. This is an interesting activity reinforcing the learning. The children play sign and identify the word. Where one child signs the word one by one, other children identify the words in English written on the blackboard. There are so many strategies we employ to ensure the children learn to read and write efficiently. Wait a minute, did we also connect English with the planting activity? Now let us observe how we connect mathematics. On the exposure visit, the children had seen a mango tree. The teacher asks the children to count the number of mangoes they see on a tree. This helps the children understand addition. To explain about subtraction, the teacher also gives a scenario. If two mangoes fall or five mangoes fall, how many are left? Outdoor visits reinforce the classroom learning. Connecting the lessons to real life examples is critical for conceptual understanding. In this way, children are able to better integrate the knowledge inside and outside the classroom. So, did you notice how we connected mathematics with the topic? Using the same concept of plants, the children learn about science, technology, English and mathematics. However, a full day of lessons can be quite heavy. Children need to be engaged in interesting activities and games. This is essential. Can we include some games using the same topic? Let us see for ourselves. The children along with the teacher are engaged in an activity related to prepositions such as on, in, under, etc. The same was taught before in class. Some students were able to grasp the meaning from the explanations but for others it was not enough. Using the play way method, the children can understand the concept of prepositions better. In this activity, the various prepositions are written on paper chits. Once these chits are thrown on the ground, the children have to pick one chit each and act out the preposition written on it. Did you see how excited the children were? Our playway strategy clarifies the meaning of prepositions much better than explanation in the classroom. These were the various strategies we use in the transdisciplinary learning. This approach allows us to interconnect science, technology, mathematics and art. The children also understand how every subject is logically connected. The various learning needs as well as the unique interests of every child is taken care of via this approach.
it is important for children to utilize their classroom learning with real life examples the concept of mathematics when linked to a shopping activity results in much more clarity compared to only classroom lessons how do children utilize their evenings and weekends we encourage children to learn about art robotics and do it yourself activities related to technology the founder of happy hands school for the deaf mr sebaji panda conducting an activity with children to understand how batteries create power the children here are engrossed with a technical expert the children had observed how the bulb fuses sometimes and the lights go out they are inquisitive and want to understand why this happens giving them first hand experience about how power and electricity works helps them form their own logic about these phenomena we always ensure that the necessary precaution and the guidance during these activities the children engaged in do it yourself activities building battery operated fan light and toy car Here we see a child expressing his joy after stimulating session of learning. It feels amazing to see kids doing so well. The children spend the Sundays occupied with various activities with very little supervision. They face challenges and make mistakes. But these mistakes help develop critical thinking skills. It allows children to experiment on their own. If teachers get involved, children will depend on the teacher whenever they face a challenge which hinders their independent problem solving skills. This also encourages information exchange. children have unique interests allowing them to play and learn from each other fosters peer teaching let us now discuss how we evaluate the improvement we conducted a pre test in the beginning and at the end we conducted a post test we compare the results to gauge the improvement in the learning levels We also had portfolios for each child which was a record of their classwork art projects etc This helped in identifying areas of weakness and monthly transformation Let us see some examples The portfolio consists of data related to not only reading and writing but also narration art technology and other activities maintaining portfolios for each child helps in monitoring their development This was about the teaching and learning endeavors alongside which the P2P DM project also hosted two collaborative workshops first in Bhubaneswar Odisha and the second in Rohtak Haryana These workshops are a melting pot for sharing our developments and findings and are usually presided over by deaf and hearing academicians as well as deaf leaders.
The main objectives for conducting these workshops is to turn the spotlight on the lack of bilingual education for deaf children, the network between the few institutes providing bilingual education and how to train and guide deaf teachers on bilingual education strategies. The sessions and presentations during these workshops provide great insights and strategies which can be utilized in our classrooms. In the past two years, the P2P DM project has made exceptional progress. These strategies and methods can be applied to deaf schools all over the world. Showcasing these findings and data to the government would also help in getting these strategies validated and adopted throughout deaf schools in India. That is all for now. Thank you for watching.